Back here on HQ, it is time for your weekly waiver wire advice presented by Snickers. Rookie mistake, maybe you just need a Snickers. So as we're going into week 10 in the NFL, these is uh, FFT's top five players to add. We have some wide receivers on the board, some tight ends, and Mike Gusecki, Hunter Henry, Taysom Hill. Um, we got to turn to our guys, Jamie Eisenberg and Dave Richard, to help us get through the waiver wire. Gentlemen, I have to update you. I did have Dak Prescott, and now that he is likely heading to IR, I will no longer have to ask you, should I start Dak or Baker? Because I'm just going to be riding with Baker Mayfield. So one last question about my fantasy team for the rest of the season, which is probably great news for everyone involved. Oh, Jacqueline, I'm sure you'll come up with more questions. We know how uh, things go for your fantasy Shouldn't roster. Shouldn't she add another quarterback? Uh, you definitely should add another quarterback. And let's show her some of the quarterbacks that she might be considering because it's a pretty good week for the position. You know, you have some one-week options and guys like Daniel Jones taking on the Carolina Panthers. And you have some long-term options like Trevor Lawrence and Drake May. Lawrence has a good matchup as well this week against Minnesota. But I think the prize is going to be Aaron Rodgers with the guys who are available. Now, take a look at your waiver wire. Make sure Matthew Stafford is not available. Make sure Tua Tungavailoa not available. And Justin Herbert, who's been playing well. All three of those guys could be worth adding as well. Stafford's at 80% rostered. The other two guys in the uh, low 70s or high 60s. But in the case of Aaron Rodgers, Dave, it's now been a good little stretch of games for him. And certainly what we saw... Last week against Houston, he had his best game of the season, 26 fantasy points. Not the yardage you're looking forward to seeing on a week-to-week -week basis, but three touchdowns, two to Garrett Wilson, one to Devontae Adams. And when those guys are clicking, it's going to be fun to use Aaron Rodgers. It's a you know decent matchup in Week 10 against the Cardinals, but the schedule gets really favorable moving forward. So is Aaron Rodgers going to be a must-start quarterback for you? I think he's going to be one of those high-floor fantasy quarterbacks where you look at him and you go, okay, 200 yards, two touchdowns every week with those wide receivers. I'm good with that. And I think he will be the catalyst of this Jets offense moving forward. And you really talked about that schedule. Some of the matchups that they have after their bye are going to be incredible. I think you look at Aaron Rodgers as a low-end starter. I just I don't know how many of those three touchdown games he's going to have. But look on your waiver wire. How many quarterbacks? that are on the waiver wire, waiver wire right now are going to have three touchdown games uh, like Rodgers will. I don't know how many there will be, so Rodgers kind of makes the cut. But I do like Daniel Jones better for this week. So if it's just a one-week option, Jones over Rodgers. If it's rest of season, Rodgers over Jones, Rodgers over Russell Wilson, Rodgers over Drake May. We have seen, uh, in terms of Jones against the Panthers, we have seen some quarterbacks have not such great fantasy days against the Panthers. Kirk Cousins after he had his big game against Tampa Bay, and even last week Derek Carr did not have a great game against that Panthers defense. So not a slam dunk, but obviously Daniel Jones coming off a strong game as well, 28 fantasy points for him against Washington. Washington, and he's not at home, so that's a good thing. He's not even in the country playing against the Panthers in Germany. And he runs, and that'll help his fantasy stat line. Yep, it certainly will. I think the Giants are going to run all over the Panthers also, which is why I love, love, love Tyrone Tracy for this week. Let's talk about Trevor Lawrence, who's actually been running as well lately. He's got three rushing touchdowns in his last two games. And another guy with a favorable upcoming schedule gets Minnesota in Week 10 and Detroit in Week 11. Lions obviously enhancing their pass rush after the loss of Aiden Hutchinson with Darius Smith joining the roster this week. But... Uh, should be a favorable situation for Lawrence, who's been pretty successful lately. 19.6 fantasy points or more in four of his past five games. Dave, is he in the mix for you with Daniel Jones and Aaron Rodgers? He's not. He's behind those guys. And it, I'm just a little bit nervous about his upside. We just saw a game against Philadelphia where he ran for two touchdowns. I know he has, what, three rushing touchdowns in his last two games. Can I really count on that? from Trevor Lawrence over the rest of the season. What I can count on is game script, though, because I do think Jacksonville is going to be trailing in most of their games the rest of the way. That means a lot of passing volume for him. So he might be able to get good yardage, but there could be some turnovers along the way. I'm a little less excited. His floor is lower than Aaron Rodgers. All right, so we'll see how uh, Lawrence does. But again, getting the job done, at least on a lower scale, with that 19.5 point threshold for basically the last month. Let's uh, show you some quarterbacks you might be moving on from for this week. Not exactly a uh, big surprise with some of these quarterbacks. Dak Prescott expected to be placed on IR. Geno Smith has been playing well, but I don't think you need to roster him through his bye week, and Derek Carr does not have any weapons to speak of after Chris Olave is in the concussion protocol, and Olave may miss week 10 after uh, suffering a multiple concussion for the second time this season. Let's talk about the running backs here to add, and you know, usually we say this is a position of priority, and you want to go out and you know get as many running backs as you possibly can to help your roster but this is a list of really a lot of handcuffs Dave when you talk about the guy at the top Isaac Isaac Arendel we'll talk about in a second uh, but you have really on the right side of the list you got Blake Corum Kamani Vidal Trey Benson Kenneth Gamel, Cam Akers Keaton Mitchell all these guys could be handcuffs or lottery tickets at some point during the season you could throw Roshan Johnson on the list as well following the trade of Khalil Herbert to Cincinnati 
And Herbert is a handcuff to keep an eye on as well because Zach Moss not expected to play for the rest of the season. In terms of Garendo, the reason I have him listed at the top is we are expecting, we're hoping, we're excited to see Christian McCaffrey back on the field and Jordan Mason is expected to play. But as we know with injuries, there is no guarantee. And I'll give you a couple examples. Last week, we said go add Ty J Spears and Tony Pollard missed practice all week. And we got to Sunday, or maybe even Friday. And most of my leagues, analyst leagues, our leagues at CBS, uh, you know, home leagues, whatever you want to call them, everybody's scrambling to get Julius Chestnut. That's the, the, the rush to get a potential starting running back on a team. Of course. Then you get to Sunday, and Brian Robinson is ruled inactive, and everybody's running to get Jeremy McNichols. You can get ahead of it with arguably the best rushing attack in the NFL by just stashing Isaac Grando now. Do not spend a lot of fab on him. Maybe not even use your top waiver priority. On I don't him. think you have to. But if you get him and we get to Sunday, and oh, by the way, McCaffrey's not ready to play. And oh, by the way, Jordan Mason's shoulder is not good to go. Everybody's starting Isaac Garendo against Tampa Bay. And then the worst case scenario is you just cut Isaac Garendo on Saturday night or Sunday, or you just keep him and you see what happens because there's no guarantee that Christian McCaffrey, I don't even want to say it. Like, I want Christian McCaffrey yep. to be good to go the rest of the season. I do worry a little bit about prioritizing Garendo because not only is he behind Christian McCaffrey, he's also behind Jordan Mason. Maybe. Maybe. And yep. if both of those guys are healthy and Mason hasn't fallen out of favor, then Garendo's third string. I don't know how long you want to carry a third string running back for but sure getting ahead of it never a bad idea just like it's okay to get ahead of it if, if you're relying on James Conner having Trey Benson if you're relying on Kyron Williams having Blake Corum go and find that handcuff now that's playoff proofing your roster I'm especially interested in doing that for my teams that have seven or more wins running backs that you're moving on from for this week you know again not the most uh uh, names that you wouldn't expect to be dropping. Zach Moss expected to be done for the season. Devin Singletary going into a bye week in week 11, clearly behind Tyrone Tracy. Gibson's barely touched the ball for the last three weeks. Jerome Ford's going into a bye, and we know Nick Chubb is back. And Ty Chandler has been passed by Cam Akers, who is the handcuffed to target in Minnesota. Let's talk about the wide receivers to add here, and there are a lot of interesting names on this list. And again, similar to quarterbacks. Make sure that Cedric Tillman is not available. Juwan Jennings not available. Jerry Judy, Romo Dunze, a lot of guys that are headed in the right direction or just playing well. Well, right now, get those guys for the most part ahead of this list. But Quentin Johnston coming off his first 100 yard game scored a touchdown after missing the two previous games with an injury, looking like a potential star for the Chargers as they're throwing the ball a little bit more. And then Xavier Leggett, who's playing much better of late for the Panthers, he's got four touchdowns in his last six games. But Dave, in the in, in the case of Quentin Johnston, it was a broken play, it was a big touchdown. But we saw week two and week three, he found the ends on both those uh, matchups. And we're seeing Justin Herbert throwing the ball a little bit more. Can Johnston eventually become a must-start wide receiver? It's a little silly to say that he's had at least 12 PPR points in three of his last five games and in two of them over 20, but it's a fact. He's just missed a lot of games in between. And before he got hurt, he was playing really well, looked like the number one wide receiver for the Chargers. And since the bye, the Chargers have become much more interested in throwing the football. Why wouldn't they? They've got Justin Herbert. His metrics have been off the charts. He's just not scoring a ton of touchdowns. He did last week, and he might continue to do so with a deep threat like Quentin Johnston. He's my favorite wide receiver to pick up off the waiver wire. And in the case of Leggett, again, four touchdowns in his last six games, taking on the Giants this week before a bye, but looking like another potential star. And we know the Panthers are selling off parts. There may be an Adam Thielen trade at some point before the end of the day. The wide receivers that you're moving on from in week number 10, Deontay Johnson just not expected to have a huge role with the Ravens. Wanda Robinson, you might want to hold him for one more week, but he's clearly disappeared from a production standpoint based on how the beginning of the year started. And again, going into a bye in week 11. Christian Watson on a buy right now and Alan Lazard is on IR so all of these players rostered in more than 56% of leagues on CBSports.com you can move on from them. This is a fun position for week 10. We know that there was a big week for tight ends in week 8 disappointing week for tight ends in week 9 we get to week 10 and here's Mike Gusecki with a Thursday game against the Ravens if there is no T. Higgins he's a potential starter top 5 type of upside you have Hunter Henry who's been excellent in the 4 games with Drake May and Taysom Hill may be the second to last man standing along with Alvin Kamara in New Orleans based on how bad the receiving core is there for the Saints. So Dave, let's start with uh, let's start with Hunter Henry here because again, Gusecki's on a different level. If there is no T. Higgins, you're going to start him and start him with confidence. Absolutely. Three of four games that T. Higgins has missed, he's been 12.3 PPR points or more. But Hunter Henry's been in a similar range in the four games with Drake May. The one time that he did not get to 12 plus PPR points was that week nine game, uh, excuse me, week eight game against the Jets where May only played a half. So is Hunter Henry just a must-start tight end rest of season as long as May's a starter? Like a low 
low end, especially in full PPR, and a lot of these tight ends are going to be in full PPR. And, yeah, if T. Higgins practices on Tuesday or Wednesday and it looks like he's going to play against Baltimore, I'm jumping off the, t- the Gesicki bandwagon, moving right onto the Hunter Henry bandwagon, and that's one that could last the rest of the season because of how well he's connected with Drake May. May's a better thrower than Jacoby Brissett. The offense looks a lot better, and he looks like he's a top-two target, and that's what we always look for from a tight end. If he's a top-two target in his offense, he's someone that should minimum be on a fantasy roster, but potentially a fantasy starter, and Henry is that. Taysom Hill may be the best pass catcher for the Saints in Week 10. He may be the second best running back for the Saints in Week 10. (laughs) He just scored 15 PPR points in this week's uh, previous week's game against the Panthers in Week 9, and he did that with four catches and 41 yards and a rushing touchdown. The only other time that he's had double digits in PPR points, he had 14 PPR points, was against the Falcons, who he's playing again this week. He had two rushing touchdowns in that game against Atlanta. So you're just looking at him as a potential top 10 option uh, as, as certainly as long as Chris Olave is out. Tight ends that you're moving on from. Tucker Kraft is on a bye. He's just been touchdown dependent. Dallas Goddard has now missed each of the last three weeks with a hamstring injury. Who knows when he's going to return? And Isaiah likely is dealing with an injury going into the Thursday game, but he has not scored a touchdown in four straight games, and he's just seen his production continue to disappear, especially since week number one. Make sure you check out our Fantasy Football Today podcast. Wherever podcasts are found, we're helping you dominate your fantasy leagues. Scan the QR code as well. You can check us out on YouTube also. The Fantasy Football Today podcast, the best podcast in the business.